Hi folks, and welcome back to Meaningful Money. Still here on my uh, trusty log uh, with two of my three daughters. So this is Ellie, my eldest, and uh, Maisie, my youngest and only four-legged daughter. <laughs> uh, so they're here um, having a nice walk while I film. So I thought I'd show them to you. bat dog. Anyway, I shall stop prattling. Right, uh, say goodbye. Bye. You say bye, Maisie. Yeah. <laughs> Will be too soft right so they shall uh, leave me to it now so we're going to talk about what happens when it all goes wrong when advice you receive turns out to be wrong when you make an investment and that investment company whatever that you've invested in goes bust and you lose some or all of your money what happens then uh, so you know what happens when it all goes wrong so before I get into that, as ever, my good friends down here in the bottom right, Seven Investment Management, uh, they sponsor uh, Meaningful Money, continue to do so. They've been sponsoring me now for nearly a year. I'm so grateful to them uh, for doing so because it helps me to keep going. Right, okay, financial advice in the UK is regulated. Uh, it is in many countries, many civilized countries of the world. Uh, and that's a good thing because, you know, when we're dealing with people's money, we want to know, uh, you want to know that the advice is being policed by somebody. Now, the regulator in this country is called the Financial Services Authority. And, you know, when things go badly, uh, you've got a sort of order that you work through. So let's say, um, you, for the purposes of this exercise, uh, we're going to pick a completely unlikely thing to happen, which is that I've advised you and that advice goes wrong. Okay, that advice turns out to be bad advice for whatever reason. So first thing you do is if I've advised you and you think I've advised you badly and you have suffered some loss as a result, the first thing you do is you complain to me either by phone or in writing. You complain to the advisor you've had the advice off and we have to resolve it. We have to resolve it within a reasonable time frame and to your satisfaction. Now, if you know, we, I say, actually, I haven't badly advised you, you are wrong, uh, I would make a final decision letter to that uh, extent and you would either accept that or not. So let's say you don't. Let's say you're convinced that I've uh, sort of badly treated you and that you have lost out as a result. Well, the first person you would go to after you've come to me and had no, no luck, bizarre scenario, um, is that you would go to something called the Financial Ombudsman Service. Now, the FOS cover all sorts of things uh, from you know, advice from banking, personal loans, credit cards, store cards, uh, even down to pawnbroking, all right? All sorts of things. Not absolutely every financial transaction in this country is regulated, but the vast majority of them are. And so, um, you know, they deal with a million queries every year, the FOS. They deal with 200,000 disputes every year. So it's a big operation. It's a government-backed thing. Um, it's impartial uh, and uh, independent, so they're not working on anybody's behalf. They're not work working on your behalf as the customer, neither are they working on my behalf as the advisor. Their job is to arbitrate between us, and so they will ask you for all your recollections of the transaction that happened. They will ask me for mine, and they will ask for a copy of my file and all the supporting pa paperwork. Um, and they will look at all that and make a decision, okay? So, you know, if they um, find uh, in your favor, that's fine, uh, because if they find that I have badly advised you, they can order me to make redress to you, sort of compensate you for the loss you've incurred because of my bad advice. Now, if they find in your favor, some people coming behind me, I can see in the monitor, if they find in your favor, uh, sorry, if they find in my favor, so against you, and you're not happy with that, well, you still have recourse to the courts, so it doesn't replace the legal system. It's kind of an arbitration thing before you get to the legal system. Okay, so that's the Ombudsman service. Go to www.financial-ombudsman.org.uk for a bit more detail on that. But what happens if I've badly advised you, and then five years down the road, I'm not in business anymore? You know, my company doesn't exist anymore because I've gone bust, because I've been badly advising lots of people. What happens then? You know, you can't claim off me because I'm not trading anymore. Well, then you have recourse to something called the Financial Services Compensation Scheme. So if I can't meet my obligations to you, then the FSCS will uh, kick in then. Okay, now the, the rule is that if the firm you're complaining about is authorised by the Financial Services Authority, then you are covered by both the Financial Ombudsman Scheme and this Compensation Scheme. So one top tip is no matter who you're going to deal with, if you're going to approach an advisor, somebody you know, putting themselves out as a financial advisor, check something called the FSA 
register just type FSA register into Google and you'll find it and you can search by the name of the firm the name of the individual um, if you've got a letterhead from your regulated firm it'll have an FSA number on the bottom usually or somewhere and so you can check that so make sure that they are regulated by the FSA um, because then you know you're covered by these two schemes now you know if um, you know this is where the sort of me using the example of me badly advising you breaks down a little bit let's say you know you have money in a bank and that goes bust well there are limits to the amount of compensation you can claim so when it comes to deposit money so money with banks or building societies you've got a maximum claim of eighty-five thousand pounds per person per institution okay so you know eighty-five thousand. if you're a couple that's 170 grand between you so a simple arrangement is don't put more than 170,000 or 85,000 each yeah that's right 85,000 each with one bank now be careful with banking licenses there's been so many takeovers and merges of banks you can end up with two different branded banks but they're actually the same bank underneath so be careful there but 85,000 is your limit for deposit based stuff for other investments, unit trusts, investment trusts, things like that, then the maximum compensation you can claim is 50,000, so be careful. Now, when it comes to insurance, so, you know, life insurance and things like that, or, but that includes pensions and annuities, then the maximum claim, well, in fact, there is no maximum, but it's 90% of whatever it is you are owed under that plan. So you won't get, you know, let's say you're about to buy an annuity or you are have, uh, taking an annuity and the annuity company goes bust and they can't pay you anymore. Well, that's disastrous. Um, but you will at least get 90% of your annuity back uh, via the compensation scheme. So those are the limits. Go to www.fscs.org.uk to find out more. Um, these two bodies are there to protect consumers. The FSA is the overall regulator, but they are places of recourse if things go badly wrong. So uh, just remember that you can't claim if markets go down. That's not bad advice and neither is it bad management usually. Um, you know, you need to know the risks of whatever you're investing in. Um, and that's about it really. So as ever, any questions, let me know. Leave a question under the video here on Facebook, YouTube, wherever you find it. And uh, we'll go from there. So don't forget the live show next time, which is uh, Friday at 4 p.m. A look back at the week's events and what matters to you and what difference it makes to your financial planning. So from my log, thanks for watching once again and I'll see you next time.